Hello, everybody. We welcome back to E3 ranking stuff. Re the ranking Ree! E3. Uh, we're doing the PC gaming show this time. There are 34 things that we ranked on a score of one to ten. Then we had our scores combined from an average score that we used to rank things. We also said whether or not we want this game on a score of never, no, maybe, yes, and day one want. Uh, using these things, we have assembled this list. It is our opinions. You may disagree, and that is fine. Just don't punch your mom or something because you're mad. That's bad. <laughs> Starting this thing off. <laughs> Please, no uppercut. No mother uppercuts. Um. <laughs> no, no. Her, her jaw deserves to be intact. <laughs> no excuses. Uh, no we're going to just go ahead. Number 34. Shenmue 3. Holy shit, I don't give a fuck. Uh, I gave it a 4. Ninja. Um, I gave it a 3. While I'm impressed at how well it's kickstarted itself, uh, it lost a fuck ton of points from me for the anti-consumer bullshit going on around this game at the moment. Dear God in heaven, we are having Metro Exodus levels of bullshit, if not worse. So, uh, I'm... Yeah, we're having almost EA levels of anti-consumer bullshit here, so... That should say everything, uh, at this point. Uh, also, not a single fuck given. Simple as. Nothing else I can say about that. Yes! yes! Yes. All right, go on. ahead. Move on so, to the next one. <laughs> moving... <laughs> I don't even know how to comment from that. Uh, moving on. Uh, we have a three-way tie for number 30. Heavenly Lord. Yep. We have... From... Good Lord. Funcom is really not doing well on this list so far. Uh, a three-way tie for number 30. We have Mutant, Year Zero, Seed of... We have Conan Unconquered, and we have Genesis Noir. I'll be honest, I've given them all a four. Right now, they're all kind of a homogenous blend of nothing to me. Like, seriously, my brain's just, they blended homogeneously. I got nothing. I also, I also gave them fours, just, just show filler. Really, I got nothing. I'm gonna go to 29 now. Um, at number 29, we have Conan Chop Chop. Holy hell, my kid could have come up with that name and he doesn't know words yet. I give it a three. I don't like it. I give it a five simply because of the name. I gave it plus two points for the fucking name. Like, I understand what you're trying to do there. You've given me something. I remember it. It actually has come out of the homogenous blur simply because of the fucking name. Apart from that, it's got nothing else to me. Like, that. that's it. So, moving on. Number 28, Ancestors, The Humankind Odyssey. Um, I've actually seen quite a bit about this game lately. A lot of people have been talking about it. It basically looks like what Spore could have been, but with primates. That, that, that's all I got for that. It's not for me. I'm definitely not buying it. It's got a four from my side. Uh, but I give there's it a an audience for it. That's all I can say there. Yeah, I give it a five. Not for me either. Looks graphically pretty good, which is why it got the five from me. But I have no interest in becoming an ape to be killed by Sekiro later on, so <laughs> I'm going to move on from that. Yes, uh, let the white wolf take your head, ape. No, I'm going to take the hard pass on that. We have two that tied at number 26. Um, I gave both a five. It is Mosaic and El Ijo. Um, El Hi just Ellie Hill looks like it has a decent story, I suppose. I don't want any of it. Uh, Mosaic also had its points of looking interesting, but I mean, I'm just, we're still not in the category of things that interest me yet, so. In the bait. More in the bait. It's Game Awards in the bait. Uh, while I think of the two, I would probably prefer Ellie Hill, um, I, I could not be bothered on either. They're just homogenous it means it's indie bait they're literally there to bait awards from from journalists at this point uh i give both of them a four not interested could not be less interested moving on from there we get to number 25 this is uh valfaris and i have to re re redo my notes which i didn't take any that says a lot exactly about how well this game sat in my mind uh, it's a game it's a thing uh, I, that's all. So much of this, of some of these shows were just, it's a game, it's a thing. And with the sheer volume of stuff coming out through the show, it really got hard to pay attention to everything. 
Um, I had a similar problem with Microsoft. There was just so much stuff. Uh, I I agree. I just put I put the six on it because visually it was like ooh, but not a lot of substance to that. Uh, we now move on to a is that a quadruple triple. or triple, triple tie? That is that, I think that's a triple tie glasses. at number. Sorry, I'm reading off printed paper, everyone. I'm oh, over really? It. You uh, actually printed so, it out? I did print it Hello, out, yes. 1970s called. They uh, really like the technology back. That's my works paper. I don't oh, give a shit. So at 22, we have three of them. We have uh, Songs of Conquest, Age of Wonders, Planetfall, Unexplored 2, The Wayfarer's Legacy. Age of Wonders, Planetfall looked, looked pretty cool. It just got a bit too weird for me. By the way, I gave all three of these a five. Uh, and I don't want any of them, to be very clear about that. But, I mean, they're in the category of, like, okay, you look like okay games. Like, I'd be happy letting my kids play this or whatever, but I don't want to do it. Yeah, for me as well, it got roughly the same level. All fives across the board. Uh, with no's, but not necessarily never going to play them. Uh, probably the most likely one I'd pick up, though, was actually Age of Wonders Planetfall. It, it reminds me of, like, basically civilization in space. That, that's all, that... You know, the rest yeah. of them, while they looked interesting, uh, definitely not so much for me. Um, but, you know, there's th going to be expected with a show with this many things. So at number 21, yes, it is just a single thing item at number 21, we have Zombie Army 4 Dead War. Uh, I personally gave it a 6, probably not going to get it, but uh, I did particularly enjoy the, the Nazi Zombie Army stuff. Uh, I noticed they've dropped the Nazi from it which is uh, what it actually was. But uh, I had a lot of fun with them. It's basically a spin-off of the Sniper Elite series. Uh, and I mean, come on. It's not often that you get to shoot a zombie in the testicles and watch them explode. Simple as that. Yeah, I gave it a four. Miss me with the zombie shit, people. <laughs> yeah, you don't like it. So Moving on. You don't like the zombie shit. <laughs> nope. I don't. I don't. I don't get the enjoyment from it. I'm glad people enjoy it, but it's not a me gentle, thing. I want to eat your brain. A triple tie I want again. To eat your brain. I keep getting Let me the... eat your brain, gentle. Let me well, eat it. Then do it. <laughs> Life will be simpler. Uh, triple rank at 18. Uh, we have. Uh, oopsie! I was about to read the developer as a game title. <laughs> that doesn't work. Uh, Midnight Ghost Hunt and Per Espera. I gave sixes. And Telling Lies, I gave a 7, because out of these three that tied, Telling Lies interest me, interested me the most, even though it's a bunch of watching videos to get clues to figure out something. That type of puzzle-solving idea actually interested me. Um, I wish the people in the videos were probably less annoying than they're going to be, but it, it was interesting. I you had a uh, slightly different opinion. Telling Lies looks like the kind of thing that's going to make me want to end my existence. Uh... That whole kind of combing over found footage or lost footage kind of thing. Um, while it may suit those people with the uh, puzzle solving mind or those who'd love their forensics and that kind of thing. For me, I'm just going to be bored, quite frankly. Uh, the other two there, you know, again, they were just, they were games. They blended for me. Both of them got fours from my end. Uh, you know, <laughs> there's, there's nothing more to say about them. A lot of this, again, a lot of things in the show just kind of blended together because there's just too much. They, they overdid it. Agreed. Anyway, moving on to something that actually is somewhat a little bit closer to my heart here. Uh, Evil Genius 2 World Domination. Uh, I've ranked this as a 6, uh, simply because we don't have too much about it right now. Uh, but I, it's definitely on a hard maybe for me to buy this. Uh, I did enjoy the first Evil Genius game. I thought it was very, very silly fun. Uh, it, you know, anyone who played the Dungeon Keep or Evil Genius series, you know, you know. You know exactly what you're getting yourself in for. And, uh, overall, just looking forward to it. Gentle? I'd have no idea what I'm getting myself into. Did not play the first one. I gave this a four. It looks silly. I'm not, I'm not into silly with my games, usually. Uh, put Steve Carell in it as a voice actor, and then I'll consider it. That's all I have you, to say. That was the most violently American thing I've heard you say all day. Yeah, it probably yeah, is. Definitely is. Too, but I'm not violent. <laughs> <laughs> Missing the point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 16. Warhammer Vermintide 2 versus. Uh, I gave it a 7 because it looked like a, a top tier. Uh, Warhammer is a top tier game. I sit next to a huge fan of it at work, so I hear about it all the time. Um, 
So seven, because it looked much better than okay, but not great. Uh, I'm not, I'm not playing it though. I don't want to get into Warhammer. Uh, it doesn't interest me aesthetically, and boy, that would be a huge time sink to pick up a series like that. Uh, personally speaking, I'm not a fan of the Vermintide series. I do like Warhammer. Uh, I think it's very interesting. Um, this just looks like they've taken the multiplayer mode from Left 4 Dead 2, where you can be the zombie, and uh, made it with you being mm -hmm. a giant rat. It's, it's essentially a zombie game, but with a rat skin. And uh, I think you're starting to regret that 7 now. Uh, not really. It still looked like it was a well-made game. I mean, game. the Vermintide games are well-made, but... Yeah, definitely not for me. Um, I ranked it as a 4. Could not be less interested from my side. Uh, yeah, so, moving on. We have, from Clay Entertainment, of all things, Griftlands. Uh, I gave it a 5, and that's about all I have to say about it. <laughs> There's really not much else. I gave it a six. Uh, it's it's branching storylines that they clearly show off and the ability to gain party members or go on through the story without any trying things but failing. I like that trial and error like story option thing. Uh, it looked pretty neat. Only a six though, because it didn't look that stellar. Uh, moving on to, Jesus, I get all the ties. It's a four way tie at you 11. Do. You're gonna get them again. I'm getting all of them. <laughs> Four of these at 11. Uh, I give them all a five, though, so I feel the same about all of them, and I don't want any of them. So let's just go through these. We have Maneater, Chris Tales, Planet Zoo, and Remnant from the Ashes. Um, the I mean, we're getting into better games as the list goes on. These were better. That Watching these on the show was much easier for me to do, but I'm still... I mean, there's just nothing here I'm into yet. Uh, from my side, pretty much the same. Uh, they all got sixes across the board from me for being interesting. The only thing that's really stuck out in my mind is from Planet Zoo, which means that if I had to pick one of these four, it would be the first one that I get, is the, the poop vacuum. Oh, yes. It literally has... You can walk around the fucking vacuum to vacuum up poop. I mean, what, what more do you need? It, it's Zoo Tycoon. Anyone who's played Zoo Tycoon and enjoyed Zoo Tycoon, you'll, you'll probably enjoy this. That's from, true. From what it looks like to me. And uh, moving on to number 10, just a single one, so have fun, gentle. Uh, <laughs> we have Moons of Madness from Funcon. Uh, again, really not not much there. Uh, very much a Cthulhu vibe from my side. You know, some things do stick out in my brain now. From the things here, now we're in the higher part of the list, some things are standing in my brain a little bit. Um, Moons of Madness. I got a very much a Cthulhu vibe. Uh, and as we know, anything that has Cthulhu in it is going to be immediately messed up and interesting. Uh, I've given it a six. Didn't really have a huge amount of information, so you know, going to keep my eyes on my eye on that one from my side. Yeah, I mean, also, also give it a six. It definitely has the Cthulhu vibe going for it. I fully agree with that. Um, I, I liked how it looked. Give it a, again, give it a solid six. So it's in the higher tier of the okay-looking games. Um, not a lot else I can add to that, though. I was like, okay, neat. That was really it. So now we move on to uh, the last tied rank of our list for PC. Both these come in at number eight. Lost Oasis and Chivalry 2. I gave both a seven. Uh, I don't regret that. Chivalry 2 looks similar to Mordhau, I think is how you say it, that came out recently. Um, oh, my God, gentle. Am I saying that wrong? You make me so sad. No, you make me sad because... Mordhau looks like chivalry, the original chivalry. You know, I guess that's fair. This is chivalry too, so I guess the original one is the OG. Obviously, I haven't yeah. played any of these, so I'm coming in with the rookie perspective. Uh, Lost Oasis, though, looked really cool. I remember that uh, catching my attention. I gave both these a soft no, meaning if someone, I was over somebody's house and like play this, I would probably do it with, without argument, but I don't have any intention of picking this up myself. So over to Ninja. Uh, I gave them both a 5 and also the same soft no that uh, Gentle gave. Uh, simply because I don't have the hardware to run either one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, if I could, it would probably be a different uh, different ranking. But as things stand right now, I can't play them because they're going to be PC exclusive. Um, particularly would love to have a go at Chivalry 2. Uh, I enjoyed the first Chivalry when I played of it. Uh, when I could play it without uh, plumes of smoke coming out from underneath my fingertips. Um... Uh, 
and Chivalry 2 just looks like it's taken that and just expanded on it and made it more stupid. And that makes it great. Uh, so moving on, we're getting closer to the top 5. At number 7, we have Starmancer. I gave it a solid 6 from my side with a, with a maybe to buy it. Um, it reminds me a bit of that, that game FTL from a, from a few years ago. Uh, instead of building, you know, just a, you know, a ship, or we're building inside a ship, or, you know, doing things inside a ship, you're now building a base. You're building your own kind of space station, or space base, whatever. And when you die, it resets like a roguelike. And for me, that's great. I love roguelikes. Uh, I've got, especially if it's something like Binding of Isaac, but uh, I've put so many times into all these different... I put far too much time into all of these different roguelikes mm. uh, to, to me, for me not to enjoy something like this. I also gave it a six. I think it looks really cool. The only thing I'm not into is I love RTSs. I love uh, civilization creators. I don't like when people mix them and think that's a good idea, but I get that's something attractive to people. I either want to build cities and watch them flourish the way I want, or I want to do an RTS game fighting other people. But if you, if I build a nice city and then you come and ruin it, I'm going to be sad. So I don't want to be sad. Hey, so I'm going to skip it. Gentle. Just got to say, you're attractive people, baby. Thank you. <laughs> uh, moving on to number six, Terraria Journey's End. I gave this a six. I'm not getting it, but I like the idea of it. It looks good. That's all I got. Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling roughly the same. I might pick it up. Uh, if it's free DLC, I'll absolutely take it. Uh, I played Blood Terraria, not a huge amount. Uh, I was definitely more of a Minecraft person rather than uh, Terraria at that time. But uh, Terraria is a solid game. A lot of people love it. Uh, you know, it's clearly looks like interesting content if it's ranking as high as it is on this list. Um, and, you know, that's just that. It's it's just solid more Terraria. More Terraria is, is just a good thing overall. So, moving on from there, is uh, the Samsung C40 monitor they showed us. I mean, it's a giant 4K curved monitor. That That's it. What, what more do you need? Yep. I gave it a 7 because the tech looks good and it's pretty, so leave it at that. Uh, yep. Another piece of hardware making our top 5 people. Don't add us. Uh, I got a 6. I put a 6 on it. I am interested in it. I'm super, super slowly building a PC, a little part at a time when I get the money. It literally might take me two years to fully build this thing. Uh, it's a monitor that I've put on my list to consider, though, so I'm into it. We are now moving on forward to number four, Warframe Empyrean. I gave this an eight because it looked even better than the other Warframe thing. Um, it looked like an eight type game to me. I like the spacefaring ideal of it. Uh, I, I think it's pretty good. Still not going to get it, but I think it's pretty good looking. Uh, as someone who played a bit of Warframe over the years, uh, can definitely say, yeah, it looks good. It looks like another Warframe expansion. Hopefully they'll add a proper endgame this time. Uh, please don't at me for any of you hardcore Warframe players, which I know I can see your keyboards itching already. Uh, it's not for me. I tried out Warframe. I've tried it on... God knows how many occasions at this point. Uh, I just can't seem to get into it from my side. I know a lot of people tell me that because I love Destiny, I love Warframe. Yeah, not the case. Hmm. Uh, so there's nothing more to say on that from my side. Uh, moving on from there, we have uh, at number three, ironically, Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, anyone who hasn't played Baldur's Gate, what are you doing? Go and play Baldur's Gate. Gentle, I'm looking at you right now. I've never even heard um, of this series. It's one of the best uh, Dungeons & Dragons inspired worlds. It's really good RPG quests. It's a very well made game. It's a lot of fun. Um, and the fact that there's another installment with Mind Flayers immediately makes me happy. And uh, I will absolutely pick this up. I hope my PC, my, my laptop can handle it. If it can't, I guess I'll have to wait until it either comes to a console or uh, I get a new PC. But uh, yeah, I want it. Give it to me. Now, please. After finding out it's a and d video game, uh, it does sound super interesting. I only gave it a six, though, because we were only given a cinematic trailer and nothing to help someone like me who's never, who can't, who's trying to understand the concept of a and d video game and how it works. I, I didn't get anything. They didn't help me. So it's like, I can't give you guys anything higher than a six because you didn't give me anything to really understand what I'm looking at. Uh, so that's where I stand. 
I'm happy with it as a three, though. That's a good bronze medal game. Moving on to number two, also, ironically, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Uh, I also gave this a six. Obviously, PC I'm gaming... I'm upset with you right now. Why? <laughs> because you gave it a six. I, I, I... The vampire thing is a lot like the zombie thing with me. I just can't get into the idea of that being fun. It's just, I'm not into it. It looked like a quality, okay. okay game, so I gave it the six, but it's, I have no interest in doing vampire things, no matter how it's twisted. So, over to you. So, uh, cue the slight rant incoming thing. Uh, logo, banner, whatever the hell you want to put on the screen there. Yeah. Gentle, you've just said that a D&D style game sounds interesting. Yes, it does. Vampire the Masquerade's a tabletop RPG game. It's based on a tabletop RPG. Again, they've done nothing to explain that to me. This is the first I'm hearing of that. Okay. Now, for my side, I played the original Vampire the Masquerade. I killed my PC with Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, I burned out my graphics card uh, on my old PC. Uh, it is honestly one of the most fun RPGs I've ever played. And uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2... I want it. Give it to me. In my face immediately. It's at a 9 for me. It's the second highest thing, second highest ranking thing I put on this entire damn list because I want it. I want it immediately. Because who doesn't want to be able to play as a vampire where you can just choose what the hell you want to do? Sweet. And also remember, never break the masquerade. I probably said that wrong and I don't care. Fair, fair enough. So, Moving on to number one, to I'm sure no one's fucking surprised, to anyone who's ever spoken to us at a single time, we have Borderlands 3, you know, the highest ranking thing, I've given it a 10 out of 10 from my side, the day one want, I had a whole TED talk about this on the Xbox video, but too long didn't, didn't listen, too long didn't read, whatever you want to call it, it's more Borderlands, I want it now please, and it's here in September. That's all I've got to say on it. It's a day one want for me as well. I also gave it a nine. It fell just short of winning the Xbox conference, but it absolutely did not have hard competition here. Uh, it easily won PC gaming. I'm happy with it sitting there. I will be getting it. I will be playing it thoroughly after I complete Destiny 2 Shadowkeep. I'm not gonna stop shouting that out. And that's all I have here. So that is our list. Go ahead and tell us what we got wrong because your opinion obviously is fact. Um, we will keep making E3 videos. We have a few more to go, as well as an E3 overall top 10 one that we are uh, quickly approaching. Uh, I am gentle. I am uh, Ninja Bunny, but, uh, and uh, I hope you guys have had a fantastic time watching this. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you didn't, well, leave a like anyway, and then tell us that we're idiots in the comments. You want vroom vroom, hit like like. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be a thing from here on out. But uh, thank you so much, you guys who stopped by. Hope you have a fantastic day. Take care. Kisses.